So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pratik Sanjayati, and I'm a graduate student at the International Institute of Information Technology in Hyderabad, India. Today, I'm here to present the research I've conducted in collaboration with Dr. Kamala Karkarlapalam and Dr. Kavita Vemuri. Um, we present a large language model driven uh, web profile extraction profile uh, web extraction web profile extraction pipeline for identical names. Um, this approach, so basically, the the problem at hand stems from the proliferation of identical names on in today's world according to a 1990 US census uh, about 100 million people shared uh, 100 million people shared only 90,000 names which means about 1,000 people shared the same name and this data is from 1990 so in 2024 it will be even more and with growing time it will be staggering completely so in today's digital age where uh, the online presence or online profiles of individuals are synonymous to their physical presence. Um, searching for a particular individual on the internet becomes uh, complicated or uh, I would say a user has to sift through various multiple profiles uh, to find the individuals of in, in, individual, individual of interest. Uh, consider a scenario where a keynote speaker in this conference shares a name with another um, individual who also happens to share some sort of um, background with them in, in maybe a field or an education or something if someone for example replaces their profile with uh, his profile over here that would cause a lot of confusion overall and this problem has been dealt before uh, in various areas we'll be discussing about that in the next uh, slides uh, the mismatch can be a result of two different things one is unintentional mismatch which is okay I might have um, uh, mismatch my uh, the, uh, someone else's profile with someone else's by mistake or some can be also intentional like if someone is trying to dupe myself m or my profile I don't know about that so I would want to know if someone else is using my profile not just my name um, and, and trying to get away with it so the area of uh, disambiguating person name is closely related to the several other fields uh, one such field is author name disambiguation which was researched previously uh, but that problem is relatively easier or I would say a little, a little easier uh, as compared to what we are trying to solve here since author name also comes with uh, other relevant information such as um, uh, titles, co-author names, area of work so we know a little more about authors than in, other, uh, in general about other people so that, that problem is a little easier the other problem is uh, document co-referencing which is a task of identifying whether two documents are talking about two, uh, a same person or two different individuals. Um, uh, lastly, web page clustering is a similar uh, two person named disambiguation. The task involves grouping all the web pages that correspond to the person, a uh, particular real world in individual. Um, most techniques aimed at resolving a person named disambiguation extra extract various type of information or entities such as um, attributes, hyperlinks, names, etc and using different mach machine learning models and then they try to cluster them and try to identify uh, relations between uh, various uh, documents uh, but uh, there are some challenges with the current approaches being used uh, which are not ad addressed effectively uh, the first sorry the first challenge is the uh, limited range of entity classification or categories uh, Typically, uh, state-of-the-art models only classify models uh, only classify entities in four different categories as location, entity, locations, uh, person, organization, and miscellaneous. Uh, but that is not enough. Like in in today's world, where the information is so nuanced, just four categories is not uh, enough. Uh, this classification often overlooks a lot of information, such as for example, in the below image attached. I'm not sure. If it's visible or not but uh, date of birth and past career such as uh, civil rights lawyer in the last line and university lecture these are key information pieces which are relevant for disambiguating two individuals uh, then the second challenge involved uh, is entity resolution as in the task of identifying which entity belongs to which individual so the current models lack uh, contextual understanding for example if there's a statement which says Claire uh, works at Google and her friend Jacob works as uh, works at JPMC so 
in 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 this case the both both the companies google and uh, jpmc will be uh, identified at, as organizations but if the subject is clear we do not know whether um, uh, jacob uh, sorry clear works as, at google or jacob based on the entities uh, extracted so because uh, that that is one more issue which is not being addressed and the last challenge is the diverse representations of uh, different entities for example um, the institute georgia institute of technology can be mentioned in a text given the context uh, as gtech gt georgia tech etc etc just comparing these entities will not be possible if uh, uh, because they have diverse representation and so as for other entities as well so our approach is grounded on uh, principles that include extracting valuable factual information using llms prompt engineering and standardization of extracted facts the pipeline can be broadly divided into three verticals information retrieval from web uh, entity extraction from the text and factual uh, fact based profile consolidation the first part involves sending queries to various uh, search engines such as google bing yahoo to extract search results uh, for a given name to ensure that the name given is a complete match on the results we enclose this particular name in double quotes and we also try to uh, address the celebrity name conflicts for example if a person Ha- shares their name with a celebrity for example michael jordan if a person searches for michael jordan on google or bing or yahoo the top 100 200 links will be only about the basketball player so we try to extract other profiles as well uh, by removing the common terms coming in these top results for example of michael jordan we removed chicago nike and basketball and so we do that by uh, michael jordan double quotes and then minus nike minus basketball minus chicago and we were able to retrieve other people who shared name with michael jordan but they were not the basketball player michael jordan and we also find some distinguished uh, professors in this a culinary artist uh, 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 an author and and several other people so yeah that is another uh, uh, that that completes information retrieval we extract the textual information from these texts these texts are then uh, the, these tech text pieces corresponding to each web page are then at, uh, uh, sent to uh, uh, what do you say gpt or an llm model with a, 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 a with a developed prompt uh, that extracts all the entities from a given uh, from a given text uh, yeah so so yeah that's the second part of our pipeline involving which which uh, which is llm driven name entity extraction llms and gpt with their deep neural network architectures have demonstrated significant improvement in the last couple of years last couple of uh, years uh, in in tasks of nlp and we conduct several experiments this is one of the experiments we conducted several such experiments with just one line of prompt uh, if you see in this particular this is the same text which i used with the previous state of the art uh model but over here it doesn't miss uh the entities and it was able to extract but there's some issues with it uh since it is labeling the entities by itself and it's not exactly giving the results that can that is acceptable to computer language and cannot be compared this is human readable but not computer readable so we uh use uh, various to to refine the gpt results and engineer uh, our uh, any of uh, the results for our any our task we employ multiple techniques suggested by previous research researchers including task description predefining requirements edge case handling or output formatting and self verification and reinforced learning and after that we are able to develop a prompt which extracts 14 different attributes which are listed in the table on the right um, which we feel were enough to uh, to extract all the information given about a person more entities can be added entities can be reduced based on the use case we are not giving out a complete prompt uh we are just showing that this approach or this technology can be used uh, in a very uh, different way than it's being used so this is uh, the prompt or or a sample prompt which we were using so if you see in the in, in i'll just highlight some points i'm not sure in in the in, in the fourth point on from top double check if all the requirements stated by the user are completely fulfilled this is reinforced learning 
then um, the second point, if you're unable to find any particular information requested by a user, it's possible that a particular text doesn't have my educational information. So in that case, I explicitly tell the prompt to label it as unknown. And then lastly, uh, in, in the section below, retrieve the information requested below and return the same in structured format as mentioned. So I'm explicitly telling it to give me in a JSON format that is output formatting and also giving it also telling the uh, model to what what to label the keys because I need to know what the keys are in order to extract that inf that information later. So this is just a generic prompt which we developed. Anybody can use that based on the use case they can develop over it. They can reduce it. We are trying to just tell how this uh, technology can be used. So this is a sample extracted web profile for my LinkedIn web, uh, my LinkedIn uh, page. The entire text of the LinkedIn page was scraped and then sent with the prompt to the GPT model. And this is the uh, extracted web profile which we extract uh, extracted web profile. One important thing which we do here is we also standardize the extracted entities using Wikipedia. So why do we do that to uh, handle the diverse representations of uh, entities? For example, in this, if you see, there's an institute name under the education tag, which is International Institute of Information Technology. I don't refer my institute always in the full form. If somewhere I'm mentioning it as IIIT Hyderabad or just IIIT H, all of these keywords, if they are sent to Google with a proper query, for example, IIIT H Institute Wikipedia, that will give me a result which is that will give me a URL corresponding to that particular institute. We standardize all the entities using this method, organization names, the major entities, not all of them. Uh, course names, for example, Bachelor of Technology can be mentioned as BTEC. Uh, so we don't have to use, we don't have to uh, depend on ML models to compare and uh, identify uh, similarity between two given text pieces. So we standardize the text with the help of Wikipedia. The next point, uh, the next part in our uh, pipeline after extracting all the information in a structured JSON format is uh, profile consolidation. So we use a prefix tree based approach, a prefix tree also known as the tree is a tree like data structure that efficiently stores and organizes, organizes data. We leverage the fundamental property of tree, which is grouping together elements which are, correspond to the same or similar things to construct the data structure and storing extracted profiles. The image on the left is a sample profile consolidation using try and to handle or cater to a lot of different use cases of individuals. We also offer strict, relaxed and loose three different kinds of matching. Uh, this is the result summarized. Uh, we subjected the pipeline to uh, the challenge of handling over 500 different names, common and uncommon. The attached table summarizes the results of the testing. We observe more distinct uh, profiles in the case of common names than, than in the case of less non or non-common non -common names. Uh, our developed pipeline has two different use cases which we identified. Our system carries practical utility for an individual seeking to manage their online presence. For example, if anybody in this room wants to identify where their profile is being used, by, they can't just enter their name on Google and see where their profile is used because that will give results where other people also share the same name. That's the entire problem. But with this pipeline, after all the results are uh, extracted and the try is constructed, uh, an individual can get a list of links uh, which are common based on these similarities. And the individual can see if someone else is trying to use uh, their profile somewhere else. And uh, that is one use case. The other is it can be used to enhance the web search uh, searches as an added layer on top of search engines. For example, if you search iPhone, it gives you like a panel of various uh, iPhones or different phones, which you can see. Similarly, if a person puts a name, uh, maybe search engines can provide a list of all the uh, individuals which a person is looking for in a summarized format using the LLMs. And then that can be uh, picked up and uh, the, the, th this can help reduce the time an individual spends for extracting information about you, other users or other, other individuals. So that's all from my side. I would like to open the floor for questions.